Good evening, everyone in Bangladesh, and good morning uh, to the speakers. Good evening. Good morning, good morning from the speakers, I believe, who are joining us uh, to, today from the United States. Uh, I'm really thankful to all of our speakers today. We have with us three community college representatives, uh, the director of international recruitment from Foothill and Deanza College, Ms. Uh, Jennifer Brook, um, um, director of international uh, program, Sunny Fulton of Montgomery Community College, Ms. Erlen Spencer. Thank you very much, ma'am, for joining us today. Um, we have uh, manager, international student recruitment from Valencia College, um, Mia. With us. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so very much uh, for joining us. And uh, we have an alumni from a community college, the Valencia College, Tanvir, uh, who will be joining us shortly. So welcome to this session. Um, my name is Rizwan Siddiqui. I'm the Education USA advisor at the EMK Center. Education USA, uh, those who are not aware of, uh, is a global network of USA departments uh, working in 170 countries, we have more than 450 centers. I'm one of the 550 advisors working to provide you accurate, correct, and comprehensive information so that you can find the best fit university uh, based on your long-term priorities and goals. To do that, I have extraordinary um, colleagues um, all over the world, uh, the university admission officials who are uh, always being helpful to provide information, the hands-on and the uh, current information, what scopes are available at their colleges and universities. And uh, this is a really good opportunity for us to hear from three community colleges together. So uh, they will not only be talking about their community college, but also the they are representing different states and different systems so they will be highlighting and enlightening us about different opportunities provided by the community college. So further um, um, I think I will hand over the floor to Jennifer straight away to uh, start the presentation. Thank you so much and good evening everyone. Good morning to my fellow <laughs> presenters. Um, my name is Jennifer Brooke. I'm here representing Foothill and De Anza Colleges and we are so delighted and thankful to Education USA for putting on this webinar and thank you for joining us to learn more about community colleges and how it might be a, a good way for you to consider um, studying in the US especially to save some of the costs involved. And we're gonna talk a lot more about that and how exactly community colleges work. I'm gonna have my two um, co-presenters introduce themselves as well really quickly. Um, Arlene? Yes, hi, I'm Arlene Spencer and I'm with Fulton Montgomery Community College, which is part of the State University of New York. And I'm Mia Chanchadovich, I'm from Valencia College um, from Orlando, Florida, part of the Florida State Community Colleges. Perfect. So some of the goals today, um, things that we're going to explore a little bit more in the next few minutes, um, we're going to talk about how you can build a budget for studying in the US, whether it be at a community college, we hope so, we hope you'll consider it, or maybe a four year institution or after you transfer. Um, identifying sources of funding. So how can you, um, after you've built your budget, how can you fund your dream of studying? Um, ways you can reduce educational cost. I know studying in the US um, as an international student myself, it can be a little bit expensive. And so we want to give you some tips and ideas for you to think about how you can reduce the cost of studying here. And then we're going to go into community colleges specifically, obviously, um, to talk about how it's a cost reduction option um, and how that works with transfer and the different opportunities that you would have by studying at a community college. And of course, we have an alum of Valencia College here who will speak at the end about his personal experience studying at a community college in the United States. So I can't wait for that. Okay, so where are we located? So as was already mentioned, we represent three different uh, community college systems, uh, three very different states. So 
I'm personally located in California right now in the Bay Area near San Francisco. Um, and then we also have New York State represented over on the East Coast of the United States. So in the Northeast and New York actually borders Canada. Um, so if you took a plane from California to New York, it's I think six mm -hmm. hours. Um, so the US is huge. <laughs> and then Florida down in the Southeast. Um, really fun, nice state as well. So you can kind of get a visual there where we're all located and all the opportunities that are available for you. So with that, um, we're going to go into each of our community colleges so you can learn a little bit more about our campuses before we get into the real meat of our presentation. So Arlene is going to talk about uh, the SUNY system and Fulton Montgomery Community College. Thank you, Jennifer. And uh, I just wanted to uh, show the New York State part of it because the United States is huge, but so is New York State. <laughs> yes. It actually takes you eight hours to go from one point of the state <laughs> to another. Um, and so New York City, which is what everybody thinks of when they hear New York State, is actually down at the very, very bottom in the Atlantic Ocean, uh, right next to Long Island, which is that big long island in the Atlantic Ocean. But so Manhattan is just that little part. Of course, when we, we think of New York City, we also think of the five boroughs of New York, um, which includes Manhattan, Kings, Queens, Staten Island, and, um, and Brook. Uh, I'm missing something, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, and if you go to the center of the state, that's actually where my campus is located, near Albany, which is the, the governing capital city of New York State. So I'm located near Albany, which is close to the center part, or center east, um, and we're about three hours from Boston. So we're about the same distance to Boston as we are to New York City. And if you keep going north, as Jennifer mentioned, you'll hit the Canadian border. And so we're about four hours from Montreal, which is in Quebec on the northern side. And if you go west all the way over to Buffalo, you cross into Niagara Falls, you're going to be in Canada in Ontario, which is actually where my husband's from. And uh, so you can easily be in four major world cities in not a lot of time. You can be in New York, Boston, Montreal, or Toronto. The SUNY system, the State University of New York, is actually a big family, and it works a slightly different than other public university systems. Uh, we actually have um, 64 campuses that are stepping stones to each other. So for example, you could enter directly into a university, but you may decide to go first to a community college, and then you might want to go to uh, a liberal arts college or a technical college to get a bachelor's degree. Uh, and we also have specialized colleges in the SUNY system, which include our medical centers, our FIT, the Fashion Institute of Technology, which is actually located in Manhattan. And then, um, uh, a college within Cornell University, which is very, very popular. Everybody knows Cornell. Um, and our university centers, which also include Cornell, Albany, Binghamton, Buffalo, and Stony Brook. Okay. okay, so my campus is Fulton Montgomery Community College, which we always include the State University of New York as part of our name. And there's our website address. And we have been recognized as one of the best community colleges in New York State, and also one of the best community colleges for our online degree programs. We've been doing online degree programs for over 20 years at FM. We are a small campus. Um, while we're located close to the capital city of Albany, New York, we're located in Johnstown, which is a small city. And um, it's a very friendly city and our campus is, has only about 2,500 students. But out of that, we have about 100 international students from 30 countries who enroll every year. Students study in a wide variety. We are a comprehensive community college with more than 40 different degree programs. And those, we have one year certificates as well as the two year associate degree. Our programs include art, business, computer science, criminal justice, electrical technology, 
entertainment technology, health, media arts, sports management, and many more. And finally, this is just a, a few photos of the campus and uh, some videos. So perhaps these will be um, available after this presentation. You can take a look at some of the videos. They're also on our website. Uh, we wanna emphasize we have very strong athletic teams. We welcome students all over the world, not just in soccer, uh, which you, you may call football, but in baseball, basketball, cross country, and track, and many other sports. Uh, we have a free online application, which is very easy to do. You can just go right to our website and it, it's free, it's no obligation. So you can just fill it out, send it to us and get more information. We are so po uh, proud to be part of the You Are Welcome Here program, which is a nationwide campaign that um, allows students to apply for our scholarships because we want to know we want you to know that you are welcome to the United States and so we offer two scholarships which are half of the uh, tuition uh, to two students every year so you can go to our website for more information and uh, we in addition have some other annual scholarships which we guarantee to every student uh, $7,000 a year if you live on campus. And again, all the information is on our website. We have lots of exciting internship opportunities. New York State is a great state to get some work experience both during your student time and maybe you may choose to do OPT, optional practical training, after your associate's degree. So again, please go visit our website and all of the information and videos are there. Thank you. Mute myself. Okay, so I'm just going to briefly give an overview about uh, Foothill Indiana Colleges, kind of shifting to the other side of the United States, West Coast, West Coast. Sorry, Arlene. Um, <laughs> and, um, so Foothill Indians are actually two separate community college campuses. And I mentioned we are located in the Bay Area near San Francisco in the heart of Silicon Valley. So many of you probably have heard of Silicon Valley before, but we have all the major companies that you think of um, surrounding our campuses. So Apple, Google, Facebook, um, Tesla is not too far away, um, LinkedIn, um, Adobe, Netflix. So we have a lot of opportunity, but not just in technology careers. Um, we have you know, internships available in art and design, humanities, even veterinary science, law, political science, and psychology. So we're actually part of the very large system in California, public system, which includes the University of California, the California State University system, and then of course, 115 community colleges all across the state of California. So you'll find community colleges in Southern California near Los Angeles. Um, you'll find community colleges in the far north of California, uh, bordering Oregon, um, and then also Bay Area and everywhere in between. California, like Arlene mentioned about New York, is also a pretty large state. Um, just driving in your car from um, San Francisco to Los Angeles takes about five hours if you go in the morning and there's no traffic and take can take a lot longer if there's traffic so you can imagine driving um, between those two cities but then you know if you want to go even farther south to san, san diego and beyond you'll eventually hit mexico and then you can drive as far north eight to ten hours and then hit oregon so it's a large state um foothill and dianza are actually quite large. Um, between the two campuses, there are about 34,000 students in total, so they're quite large. Um, De Anza is the larger of the two campuses, and Foothill is quieter, more peaceful, so if you like that kind of atmosphere, students typically would choose Foothill. Um, what we're known for is transfer success. So um, within, I'm going to talk more about transfer later, but within the University of California system in particular, there's guaranteed transfer. And so we have a very high rate of student success and transfer, particularly to the UC system, but also to other um, universities, both private 
public, not only in California, but also all around the United States. So we do have students starting with us in um, California that may go to New York for a transfer or Florida or the Midwest, Jenny, for Jennifer, example. Jennifer, yeah. uh, sorry to interrupt you. Can I mute everyone and then you can unmute sure. yourself? Okay. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so, sorry, uh, it seems. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you can go now. Okay, perfect. So, um, as I was saying, for transfer, you most students do enjoy staying in California, but you do have opportunities all across the U.S. and even in other countries as well. Um, even though we are quite large, we have small class sizes, personalized attention. We have about 3,400 international students. So it's quite a lot of international students, but they hail from over 85 countries. And we provide a lot of services to ensure that you're comfortable on our campuses, that you're successful um, in your transfer and just in your adjustment to living in the United States, making friends, um, finding resources on campus, joining clubs, um, activities, and things like that. Um, we're also um, ranked as one of the safest community colleges um, in, well, Foothill, actually the second safest in the whole United States, but as a district, the safest in California. So um, the campuses themselves are quite safe, um, the neighborhoods as well. Um, let's see, I wanted to give some updates for fall. Um, because I know that's coming up and there may be some students uh, listening into our webinar today that might be still thinking about applying. We have very flexible admission and that goes across the board for community colleges in general. Um, so we don't require the SAT or ACT, uh, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, we are waiving our application fee through the end of July. So if you're still thinking about applying, there is no cost or obligation there. And then if you decide, mm, actually, I thought I might want to start in September, but no, I'm, I'm not quite ready. I want to start my studies in the winter because we have quarter system or springtime. So either in January or April, you can do that and we won't, we won't charge you anything. Um, we also accept the Duolingo English test. So I know right now it's a little difficult to do your TOEFL or IELTS um, because of the lockdown that's been happening. And it is quite expensive to take TOEFL. Um, so Duolingo is another option. Uh, and that test you can take from home on your computer. And it's only 49 US dollars to take. We are being very flexible with transcripts um, and national examination results. We know, um, you know, it, it, some of those exams have been pushed back uh, or it's very difficult to get your transcripts right now because your schools are closed. And so we're being flexible on that because um, we understand the situation. We are also issuing I-20s electronically uh, for into the future. So until we're told differently, you don't have to pay any fees to have anything shipped to you. We will be online in the fall. Um, so we will not um, have classes taking place in person on campus. So if you would like to maybe start with some classes from your home in um, Bangladesh, you can certainly do that. And we're going to have student services and support available to you um, online. So that is a little bit about us. I'm gonna hand it over to Mia to talk about Valencia. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm gonna go over um, two slides regarding Valencia College. Um, I'm going to give you an overview about Valencia. And then I'm going to give you an overview of something similar to what Jennifer said, ways that we are um, adapting to the current situation um, for COVID and fall um, enrollment. So a little bit about Valencia, we're located in Central Florida. We have seven campuses um, throughout, um, throughout Central Florida. We're right next to um, all the major attractions. So they're very popular with the hospitality industry, culinary, but also um, business um, and, and, and engineering as well. We are, some of our campuses are located right next to uh, different um, theme parks. For example, our Ciola is by Disney. Um, West Campus is near Universal Studios. 
um, and so forth around. And then we also have uh, a joint downtown campus in Orlando, which I will talk a little bit uh, later in, in the transfer, uh, present, transfer portion. To give you a perspective um, where, how far Florida is, um, it would take you about four hours to drive from Orlando to Miami without any traffic if you leave very early. And so a lot of, many of us remain in Orlando and in Central Florida. We're also, there's also beaches on, on both coasts um, on the very quickly that you will arrive within an hour to two hours on each side. Um, our, our college is uh, very, enrollment is very large within 60,000 students, but that does not include enrolled all at once. It's, it could be part-time or full-time enrollment. But regardless, the average class set is 23 uh, students. We have a large um, international student population from students from over 110 different countries. Currently, right now, we're rate, ranked as the sixth in hosting international students at a community college based on the Open Door 2019. Our report. Something else that's unique with us is that we have on-campus housing available in partnership with the University of Central Florida. That's a, uh, in, at the downtown campus. We are we have guaranteed admission to one of the Flo uh, Florida 12 public universities and a special direct connect to UC UCF um, um, entry and support uh, system. We also are ranked the fourth in the U.S. for the number of associate degrees awarded and we are accredited by SACS. Next slide, please. So I'm going to give you some updates for Valencia College. Um, when all of our um, online course, but all of our courses for the spring semester, the students were currently enrolled, were finished online. We all, summer semester was also online as well. And our plan for fall semester, fall 2020, is that it will be online as well. So we have extended the application fee uh, application, we have extended the application deadline until July 15th, but we're, we're also very flexible. And we have waived the application fee, not only for fall 2020, but also for spring 2021. We are also offering scholarships uh, to students for, as you can see on our website, international.valenciacollege.edu, for um, first time in college, in international students for their first semester, and also first time in, uh, uh, students who have attended at a previous university, um, they're also eligible for another scholarship. We also have a strong partnership with the Intensive English Program, it's another department, and we offer scholarship for st uh, starting at the Intensive English Program of Valencia College and then transferring to the degree program. We have also adopted um, issuing I-20s electronically and uh, we are accepting Duolingo as proof of English proficiency for admission. We are available on our website, on our live chat, um, nine to five, and uh, we're providing all the virtual, all support uh, virtually. Um, just to uh, share how to, you will apply to the college, you first will complete the online application, then you will set up the My ISS um, student portal, which is really unique um, um, to us as a community college to use Synopsis for um, to accept documents for students. And so it's a very, very seamless process um, in order to submit documents and uh, apply for the college. All right, so I'm gonna take over here and talk about budgeting and what you need to do when you're thinking about studying abroad and specifically studying in the US. You need to figure out how much your family can afford for education. Is this something that really fits you? Uh, and when you think about studying abroad, you have to not only look at what the tuition is, uh, which is often very easy to find on a college website, but there are other costs. For example, at Fort Montgomery, we are a residential community college. Students live on campus. So there's also a room and board uh, cost. Uh, actually food um, is part of the board, but you may wanna have additional food in your apartments as well. And think about books and supplies and other miscellaneous, maybe some just fun money to be able to travel and go and visit some of the big cities that might be near your campus. Uh, so you have to put together all these ideas uh, and estimated costs and every, what, every college website will have these estimated costs so that you can really think about that and plan ahead. 
So this is just a general breakdown. Obviously, every institution will have their own tuition and fees, um, but you can see a comparison. So let's look over to the, uh, the far end here, four-year private institutions. So if you were to be directly admitted to a four-year private institution, an average cost of tuition and fees alone would be at least $36,000. And I know many, many private institutions that are well beyond that for tuition costs. Living on campus, transportation, books and supplies and other expenses, you're looking at at least $54,000 a year. Compare that to a public institution. And when we say it's public, that means that they're, they're receiving money from the state governments. So it, for example, in New York, the New York state government would be giving money to the public community colleges and four-year colleges. So you can see that that cost comes down significantly when you, because you have the state contributing money to the institution and so the tuition and fees comes down a lot. And then you look at the two-year public community colleges and community colleges are often funded not only by the state, but from their local community governments. And that's why you see that huge drop in tuition costs. So you would go from either 36 to $26,000 all the way down to 5,700 as an estimate for tuition and fees per year at a community college. I wanna say, that tell you that community colleges must follow the same standards of education as our four-year public and private partners. So there's no loss to the quality of education. It's just that we have an additional funding stream coming from our local community uh, governments. And so that's why a lot of students uh, start their education at a community college. So plan your finances before you start look at each, each institution that you're thinking about, get their costs um, and look at their, their estimated budget costs for each student, look at their financial aid they may offer or scholarships they may offer. Remember that in the United States, most students are funded by their own money using their family's um, funding usually. Most of our students about 80% are actually funded by their families. So while some scholarships may be available, it's unusual to find a full scholarship paying for everything. So when students approach me and ask for full scholarships, I recommend that maybe they take a couple of years in work before they, so that they can save money and then they can make their dream of coming and studying in the US a reality. So, um, if you find that when you're looking in your search and you don't have the finances and there's not scholarships available, you may want to not apply to a million different schools. You may want to limit your choice to five or less schools that you know that you can afford that fit your profile and your needs. Okay, I'm gonna take it from here. Um, so, what if you're still thinking about your budget you want to identify where can you get some funding some help from um, and so there's many suggestions that we have and these are just a few that you can maybe keep in the back of your mind as you're making your plan of course your parents or other family members as arlene just mentioned 80 percent of the international students in general in the u.s are actually self-funded or family funded so that's one major source and I know that conversation may be a little bit uncomfortable but it's important that you talk to your family about how much money they may be able to use to support you and if not maybe as Arlene suggested another thing you may consider doing is working for a few years saving up your money and then coming. There's also scholarships Arlene also mentioned and so every institution is going to be different Every institution will have different criteria for scholarships as well. And so that's why it's so important. And we didn't talk too much about this in our presentation, but it's so important to narrow down your options. So you have a smaller handful of institutions that meet your needs. So you can research 
these opportunities like scholarships? Do I have to do a separate application? Or can I just apply and be eligible for scholarships? Um, how much is the bottom line cost? And so you wanna look at those. On-campus jobs is another way to make some money. I do wanna caution you though on this because on-campus jobs are a great way to get work experience in the United States to boost your CV, especially if you want to apply for internships later or jobs after you finish your studies. However, the money you'll make for, from an on-campus job will not pay for all of your expenses. Um, it, it's a great way to maybe pay for books or going out and having fun with your new friends that you're going to make or even pay part of your rent if you're living off campus, but it definitely will not pay for every cost that you'll have. So you'll need to have some other funding um, in addition to jobs. There's also outside scholarships available. Um, you can look into different organizations um, in your home country or um, even in the US, uh, for example, um, you know, religious organizations, there could be um, organizations that support international students from South Asia um, to study in the United States. So you wanna work with Education USA to see if there's any of those opportunities available to you personally. Athletic scholarships. Um, now, again, those are quite competitive. Uh, you would need to, um, for community colleges in California, there are not athletic scholarships, but I do know some community colleges do offer this, so you want to look into that. Um, but for your institutions, do for higher level um, athletics. So you have to be extremely competitive um, in the particular sport that you are interested in. And I mentioned religious organizations as well. So you want to look at what's the best buy? What's the return on your investment? You want to look at the quality of the education, but find a cost that fits your budget and your needs. And so as Arlene mentioned, community colleges, and we're going to talk more about this, could be a great option because the quality of education is very exceptional. It's very high. You're not losing on, you know, many of the things that you would um, get at a four-year institution. There's research opportunities in your first year, two years, many um, even internship opportunities, clubs, organizations, honor societies. So you're getting all of that and high quality faculty, but the cost is more affordable. So you want to kind of weigh those options. You might want to consider attending summer courses or online courses, which right now you have a great opportunity to do that um, from your home country. So you're going to save on living expenses, um, and those costs of those nature, because you may be living at home with your parents and you'll save that money up so you can come to our campuses and we'll, we'll welcome you hopefully in the future. You can also seek scholarships after you enroll. So scholarships don't stop after you've um, already applied to the institution. Many times there's additional scholarships for current students. Um, we, we do offer those. Um, so those might be based on your grades at the college level. Those may be based on, you know, your involvement on campus or musical ability or athletic ability. And then many um, universities do offer transfer scholarships. So when you're transferring from the community college to the university level, there's an opportunity there to get additional um, money and scholarships. And then, of course, why we're here right now, uh, another cost saving benefit is um, attending a community college. And we're going to talk a little bit more about how that works right now. So some of you may have heard, you know, about community colleges may have some idea, but we're just going to go into how it works and what a community college is. So essentially, community college is the first two years of the general education courses that you need of your bachelor's degree. So you know, um, for the US education system, even for other countries, you know, you're gonna have general classes. So even if you are a computer science major, for example, you're still going to have to take classes in other areas like English, you're gonna have to take some math classes, maybe some psychology classes, maybe an art class. We want you to be well-rounded in the US. We want you to be able to adjust to different situations and have knowledge in many different areas. So at the community college, you're taking those general courses as well as some courses in your major. In your third year, you will go directly into the third year of the university of your choice. 
you'll complete two more years. So the total is four. I have some students that say six, no, two plus two mm -hmm. is four years. Still the same amount of time. Your bachelor's degree is actually granted by the university. So when you um, are creating your CV or you're applying to graduate school, um, applying to jobs, internships, your bachelor's degree is from the university itself. So that's one important thing to know. Um, tuition fees are much more affordable. We've talked a lot about that already. Arlene had a great chart there that explained to that. You can also ease into the US education system. So it is a different system completely. And so the classes tend to be smaller. There tends to be a lot more support for students, um, a lot more interaction with your professors because they're not off doing all this research and not having time to talk to you. So you have that support there and you're, it's flexible. So for many students that may not be sure 100% what they want to study, you can take courses in different areas. You can find out what you like or maybe don't like so much. And we do have students that declare their major when they transfer to the university. So it gives you a bit more time to decide what you want to do. Classes are taught by faculty. We don't really have teaching assistants. Um, so you have full professors teaching your classes. Um, we have articulation agreements, guaranteed admission, which Mia um, touched upon and Arlene. Um, we have counselors that help you transfer. So they sit down with you and work with you on the applications. And many community colleges have transfer centers that host university representatives that talk about their universities, give you all the information you need. And so we really want to ensure that you're successful um, in continuing on with your bachelor's degree. And these resources are there, um, certainly on the to uh, top community college campuses and certainly the three of ours. Um, we also do offer to your associate degree programs. So um, th those you know, they can be academic, but there are some vocational programs as well. Um, so that might be of interest to some of you, especially if you may have a bachelor's degree already in your home country and you want to get more um, courses that maybe aren't available there uh, in the United States. But one really key thing that I think many people don't know is that if you complete an associate's degree, you are actually uh, have the availability of optional practical training or OPT which means that you can actually work for an entire year in the United States, make some money, um, get some experience, um, and then you can go on and transfer to the university after that. So that is one huge added benefit of the community college. Um, this is just a quick chart of how it works. So high school, I know your structure is a little bit different in Bangladesh, but you know, go from high school, two years at the community college, and then the final two years, you can go to public university, um, in-state private universities, or out-of-state universities. So we have students on all three of our campuses going to public universities, privates, liberal arts, research, technical universities. So all those options are still available to you. Okay, I'm gonna hand that over to Mia to continue the conversation. Thank you, Jennifer. And I'm going to uh, wrap up this with some fast facts about community college. Um, there are 6.9 million students that study at U.S. community colleges. 50% uh, of uh, U.S. high school students start their bachelor's degrees at a community college. And in a large uh, population of students, 86,000, over 86,000 are internationals that start at U.S. community college. Um, so uh, community colleges are a great way to not not only for international students to start um, their, their academic degree, but also for domestic students and students that are from the United States, that's an overwhelming majority start at a community college and continue on to their bachelor's program. Next slide, please. So I, I know we talked about and touched upon many of the uh, points here why community college, <clears throat> but just to recap, on some of the uh, great benefits of starting at a community college. There are many, many academic programs to choose from um, and many transfer <laughs> options um, for you to choose from and also technical programs. So, uh, uh, I think um, yeah, it might be frozen. Um, yes, it seems. Mia, uh, you were frozen. So I think the last maybe 10 or 15 seconds, we didn't hear. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> Can you guys see me now? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> to recap on the community college, um, the, the flexible admission, there's no SAT or ACT required. Now, of course, you have to meet the English proficiency in order to um, enter, but we do have Okay, I think she's having a <laughs> technical difficulty. Uh, Mia, you're freezing. Like we heard the flexible emission part. I think my internet connection is unstable. Jennifer, can you take over? Sure, no problem. So um, Mia was talking about flexible emission. Um, SAT is not required, but we do need English proficiency typically. Um, However, there are some community colleges, if you don't have that in hand, um, you can enroll in their in-house ESL program. That is a possibility, but um, you just have to look at what is best for you personally and what you're looking to do. Um, community colleges, a, a misconception is that I often get asked about is, you know, are the facilities not as good as a university? Is it just a building in the middle of the city? Not typically, not with our campuses. Um, we have full campuses, there are safe and friendly atmospheres. Um, we have many facilities, new facilities with state-of-the-art technology um, there for you to use and take advantage of. Um, and so it's maybe not as much of a misconception that you may have seen in movies or heard about um, in your home country. And then earlier we mentioned, you know, we have lots of support services. We really want to ensure that you're successful. Um, honors programs, um, campus abroad programs, if you're interested in exploring um, other areas, uh, first year experience programs, and the list goes on and on. So there are many opportunities that you typically would associate with a four year university that are available at community colleges as well. So you're not going to miss out on that. Um, how does transfer work? So let's talk more about the transfer because I know that's really important and that's probably something that's on the forefront of your mind right now. You know, how am I going to attend a community college and get my bachelor's degree? Because that's really important. Um, so transfer is based on many different factors depending on the state that you um, are applying in, uh, the institutions involved and the students organizational skills. So what we always say is we in orientation are even starting with the process, starting to have students think about the process. But if you leave it to the last minute, that's going to affect your transfer. So you want to be organized. You want to take advantage of all the opportunities and resources that we have available for you because we are here to help you um, and you'll be successful. Articulation agreements. So articulation agreements essentially are agreements between the community college and the four-year um, university. And what that means is that it ensures that every class that you take at that community college is going to transfer over to the university and count towards your bachelor's degree. So typically you have to get a C uh, score or grade or higher in that class, which is an average score um, in order for it to count towards your bachelor's. But that ensures that it carries over so you don't have to think about it or worry about it any further. Policies will vary. Just like the US, there's no national um, education, I guess, uh, governing board or organization. And so every state, every institution will have their own agreements. And so this is something really important that when you're kind of narrowing down where you want to apply, you want to do a little bit of research on the websites or of course, we are all here to help you as well. So if you have questions, please feel free to reach out and ask about um, whatever it may be. Um, I mentioned transfer resources on campus. Um, so you wanna make sure you utilize those. And you wanna make sure, for example, say you have a dream university that you would like to attend. You might wanna ask one of us, you know, do you have other students that have gone to that university? Do you um, have agreement already in place? communicate that's the key thing and plan early and so you have all the um, information up front and so you're able to make good choices and be able to follow through on um, all the steps that you'll need to take 
Okay, um, Arlene's going to talk more about the transfer process in the state of New York. Okay, so um, first I want to mention that in New York State, we actually do have not yet made a decision um, about being in person or online only like you have in California and Florida. Uh, actually, we feel that it might be a little bit of both. Uh, so because we have such a strong online degree programs to choose from, if you're a student who uh, cannot get your visa yet, or um, you can't travel to the United States in the fall, you definitely can come to and study at all of our institutions online and then transition later. Uh, but my campus uh, and many other campuses in SUNY that especially in the upper part, central and western and northern parts of New York State, we have very, very low numbers of COVID cases. Most of those cases happened in March. And so we are phasing uh, back to normalcy actually in our parts of the state. So we are planning on being open um, but we will make accommodations if students are here. We have a large number of international students and of course domestic students who want to be on campus, but um, we are going to be guaranteeing every student a private bedroom and this is SUNY wide. So every SUNY institution that is welcoming students to campus, the students are guaranteed a private bedroom. Again, Coming to the public university systems, whether it's a community college or a public four-year campus is going to be more affordable, wonderful research um, programs and internship programs. So let's go to the next slide. We are the, the nation's largest comprehensive university system. And so these are just a few of our universities uh, within the SUNY system and as Jennifer mentioned every state is different but in SUNY we have a guaranteed transfer everything is on the SUNY website suny.edu but some of our university centers are Cornell University of Buffalo Binghamton Stony Brook our specialized institution of ESF, Environmental Science and Forestry, and the University of Albany. And I've put their national rankings here for you. But again, there are guaranteed within the SUNY system, if you start at a community college and follow what you need to follow on the SUNY website for the courses that you take, you will, and receive the GPA that you need to receive, you will be admitted to those institutions. And finally, of course, outside of the SUNY system, uh, there are other opportunities for you. We have a new agreement with Northeastern University in Boston, which is ranked in number 40 in the nation. And that's a wonderful program because students only need a 2.5 GPA to be admitted and transferred to that highly ranked institution. We've had students go to other uh, institutions that are highly ranked, including a uh, Wisconsin uh, Rensselaer Polytechnical Institute, which is only about an hour from Fort Montgomery, Syracuse University, which is about two hours, Rutgers is in New Jersey, so that's about four hours away, Fordham University in New York City, and then I just had a student get a full 100% scholarship to go to Texas Christian University, so there are some universities that do give 100% scholarships to transfer students and Colorado State, Farley Dickinson in, in New Jersey, and then Cal Lutheran in California. So you can see, as Jennifer mentioned, you can go out of state. You can go out of the US. We've had students transfer to universities uh, both in Canada and in their home countries. There are uh, limitless possibilities, but keep that communication open. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Arlene. Um, so I'm just going to briefly give an overview about how transfer works in California. So I mentioned way early in the presentation that there are 115 um, community colleges in the entire state of California. And every single one of the community colleges has the exact same basic transfer guarantees. So no matter if you are at Foothill or De Anza or down in Southern California at Orange Coast College or whatever you may choose, it's gonna be identical because it is one big system. So in terms of guaranteed admission, 
there is guaranteed admission to six of the university or UC campuses. The six, oh my gosh, this is a test, are um, UC Davis, UC Irvine, UC um, Santa Barbara, um, Santa Cruz, UC Merced, and UC Riverside. So all six of those are guaranteed admission. We also, in addition to that, have um, guaranteed admission to the entire um, California State University system if you receive an associate degree. So that is 20, actually 23 campuses. Um, there's one Maritime Academy and it's very small, but the entire system is guaranteed as well. In addition, Foothill and Deans is one of six community colleges with preferred admission to UCLA, University of California, Los Angeles. Um, and with that, uh, basically, if you're in our honors program, you can apply to more than one major, which is usually not really allowed, and um, your application gets preference over um, others. And so that's also really important for our students. We also have articulation agreements and other guaranteed admission agreements across the entire United States. Um, so some really quick examples, we have guaranteed admission to Arizona State University, um, Santa Clara University, which is the small um, liberal arts university in California, so some just quick examples. But in terms of um, articulations, completely across the US. Um, so even in Canada, even in Europe. So if you are not sure if you wanna stay in California or even in the United States, those options are still available to you. And then we do with our um, basically transfer pathways. Um, so I mentioned that the University of California and California State University system and the California Community Colleges are all one big public system. And it actually is a state law that created the system in California. So that's how um, you know, big of a deal it is for us here. And so just like with SUNY, you can go to the SUNY website and see the um, agreements. We have assist.org. And so if you're interested, you can actually go on this website and choose you know, Foothill or De Anza College, um, University of California, Davis or Riverside or in Los Angeles or Berkeley, and then you're the major that you would like to study, and you can see right then and there the courses that you need to take in order to transfer. So it's very, right? there's no hidden, you know, surprises there for you. We do have the counselors there to help guide you and make sure you're on the right track. But even before you come, you can actually see the transfer pathway. So it's very well laid out for you in California. And then um, Mia? Yeah. You want to talk about Florida? I'm going to give this another try. Please stop me if <clears throat> I'm cutting up again. Um, as, similarly to what Arlene and Jennifer um, discussed, uh, the state of Florida functions the same way. The key, the key is, as they have mentioned, is to communicate and to do research where would you like to transfer upon completing your AA degree. And so that you can review the different scholarship opportunities, the different uh, articulation agreements and transfer plans to receive the best um, support and guidance uh, for your transfer. At, at uh, Valencia College, we have uh, guaranteed uh, admission to 12 uh, Florida public universities, as well as um, articulation agreements with private uh, universities and um, throughout the United States as well. But I'm going to focus on the transfer plan to University of Central Florida because that is our uh, main uh, sister, uh, sister school in, and a lot of our students direct, uh, directly transfer there after completing um, their AA degree. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't transfer to University of Florida, Florida State, University of South Florida, um, even uh, applying to University of Miami. It just means that uh, that is where the majority of our students um, end up uh, transferring. So the particular agreement is you will apply to Valencia College, you complete your AA degree. What's very important is that you have to graduate with your Associate of Arts, apply to UCF, and get a guaranteed uh, admission. You don't, uh, with transferring, you are not going to have to resubmit your SAT or ACT scores. And um, it will take you, as it was all of these points were already mentioned, um, four years to complete your bachelor's degree. What's really exciting is that you have an opportunity to complete, when you go to any community college, an opportunity to do your optical practical training twice, not just one time after bachelor's, 
you can complete it with uh, after your AA for one year, go to your bachelor's and then apply for another um, OPT. So that could potentially be two years of uh, uh, training in, in the workforce. What I'm showing you uh, the image here is Valencia College and UCF downtown campus. With, uh, that's unique to our International Direct Connect uh, partnership is that you can go to Valencia College, um, take your classes in the same building and with and also stay in the same building to take classes uh, for University of Central Florida. So students, UCF students, if they're admitted directly to a bachelor's program or uh, Valencia College students who are admitted directly to the AA program are taking the same classes at the downtown campus. So that's the very, very unique um, partnership and integration. So Valencia College professors and UCF College prof uh, UCF professors are teaching classes together. Additionally, um, the, we have the joint housing uh, campus. That is what you're looking at here is the housing building where Valencia College students and UCF students are living in the same housing um, and are in a building relationship and, and um, ex experience the, the American experience. Um, in a US, uh, US campus. So that, thank you. Okay, so this slide is just our contact information for Fulton Montgomery Community College in SUNY, the State University of New York. My uh, office email, our website, which you can find all kinds of information, and of course our social media. And uh, same, contact us at Valencia College. Uh, you can email us at internationalstudents at valenciacollege.edu. We are available virtually through chat from our website, um, International Valencia College from nine to five, as well as through Skype. Um, you can follow us on our social media, Study in Orlando, Florida. And we also have a Facebook group, Valencia College International Students. We have about 5,000 students um, in that group where they share support um, for housing, for roommates, uh, exchanging books, um, uh, everything. If it's uh, essentially has become a, a very large and uh, prominent student forum for us. And also you can, right now you can do a virtual tours of our campus. Uh, again, through our, if you just simply go on our website, you'll be able to see the different uh, campus locations to do a campus tour. And here is some of the social media and contact information for Foothill and Deanza. Please join us on Instagram, especially. I like using that. Um, so we, ha we also have WhatsApp because I want to let you know that we do have a representative actually located in South Asia, um, Ms. Dapali Shaw. She is in India, but she is in the same kind of time zone as you guys. So you can actually WhatsApp her um, and have a chat online or over the phone if you have any questions or concerns. But feel free to join us and find out more information. So now I think um, we're going to move on and have the alumni uh, from Valencia College speak about his experience. I'm excited to hear. I'm going to stop sharing my screen at this point. So, okay. I would like to uh, quickly introduce Tanvir Mahmoud. Um, he was a, a community college initiative participant for this past year for Valencia College. And um, he has successfully obtained a certificate from Valencia College and has just returned uh, home. So we'll have him share about his um, experience. I think Denver is muted. Let me unmute him. Um, hello everyone, hi Mia, thank you for having me here, thank you Ian Cassandra for having me here to share my experience in Valencia College and actually as a community college. So uh, studying in the United States and institution is really very amazing for me because everything is very new, new environment, new culture and new peer as well. So I would like to share my experience with the uh, you know, specific topics that I outlined it, that I decided to share. So I'm gonna start with campus because campus is the most important thing that we really interested as a students. Uh, in Valencia College, this is one of the most biggest co community college in the United States as well as in Florida as well. So 
uh, studying in a biggest campus or like a big campus it feels like a sense of freedom. So you can do everything, what you want. You have a like freedom to walk around and enjoy the natural views. But according to the uh, campus policy and uh, institutional rules as well. So that is what one assumption that a community college wanted to give you before you go and start your studies in a big state universities. I think that's very important to know about the latest technologies and how, it, how to behave in a campus. So that's what education we, uh, we, we adopt from a community college. So um, if, if we move on to the classrooms, as Mia said that the average class of the state college is 23 students, which is really very small. So we can have a nice strong relationship with the professor. If you have any problems, you can communicate with them in the classroom and also contact with the students that your classmates and it also make personal relationship with the classmates. That is very important for whole educational year. And if I come to the uh, story of the professors, this really, I always wanted to share my stories about the professors, the relationship of the professors. And I really amazed me that United States professor, they really believe in making a personal relationship with you. And another thing is that I really, very interested that thing is like, most of the Americans have a two jobs. So most of the uh, professors, you will feel like they have an expertise on other jobs on the particular industry that you are really, very interested on. For example, I have a very interested on uh, restaurant industries, and I got a professor who have who owned a small company who counseling for the new entrepreneurs who wanted to operate in the restaurant industry. So we had a really very nice personal relationship, and I got a really valuable advice. I think that's really very important in the education sector because in this situation, we are wanted to build ourselves and our experience. And then if I uh, talk about the Valencia College, uh, I, as of our program requirement, I had to go through the intensive English program, which is uh, another department of the Valencia College. And I really believe that that was the first key that really I needed. Because whenever we go from one country to another country, as far as a Bangladesh, English is not our first language, it's our second language. And we feel really very low from our inside that uh, we, we cannot communicate well and something like this. People will feel offended, our wrong pronunciation, something like this. But in IEP, it's not only teaching us how to speak in English or how to develop our English skill, it also making us confident that yes, it's no, no worries. If you are bad in English, no worries. Everyone will appreciate that you are trying to speak their language. That's I really feel from IEP. So after that, uh, the different services, if I talk about the different services, that was really, very really another ex amazing experience I got because they have a life center, library services, and as well mathematics centers and so on. So if you want to, you know, want to want uh, assist from expertise, people who want to, who want you, if you want to say, show your essays and wanted to get some expertise feedback, you can make an appointment to the writing center and go to them and talk to about your uh, all the problems that you regard in your essay writing. And another thing I really think that all the community colleges have this international student service. They did a really amazing job. They always try to provide the best service to the international students so that they never feel alone. So they also wanted to try to push you to engage with the other people. You know, they arrange different type of fairs, maybe clubs and stuff so that you can engage with the other students and make some friends which make you really, very really friendly and you, you also have a personal relationship throughout the process. So then I would like to share about the clubs. Actually, I got a chance to lead a business club in Valencia College. So I was a vice president of Phi Beta Lambda class. It's a business plan club for one semester. So I think Clubs is another thing that make a really, very, uh, give you a very, very expensive experience that you are going to go into the corporate level. So club is like a little bit uh, stimulation for you so that you can learn which behavior you should do or not. So throughout the club, you can have fun, you can get information, and you can learn the behavior, corporate behavior, and moreover, you can make some friends. That's very important for me actually. So another thing I got from Valencia, this is my favorite part of the Valencia, like whole year of the Valencia, that was like field trips. So I got a chance to go in NASA, 
which was almost free of cost. It was like a very minimum uh, price. So I got a chance to go in Disney. So I had a class on Disney. That's a really, really amazing thing. And also there was like a different type of games like hockey, basketballs, American footballs, and so on. So this is a something like, you know, this is also make us engage with the outer world of the cam campus. It's not like that our students have a whole life in the in campus. It's also have a life out of campus. So they also accommodate that, that as well. And one of the things I would like to share about the direct connect, that is like you're having an AA degree or associate degree and transfer our uh, course to the uh, state university and come out with a bachelor's. That's the amazing thing of community colleges that I really appreciate because primarily it will groom you for your state university because whenever you go in a state university, you, there will be a huge classes with like maybe 50 or 60, 70 students so you you need to learn how to how to communicate with the professor. So community college was the first step that show you how to do this and what behavior you should do, and we groom you for the future uh, university life. And end of the end of my um, speech, I would like to share about the city of Orlando, living in the United States. They're really very really amazing. Everything is very different. Weather, people. And most amazing thing is like it's one of the most biggest immigrant countries. So you can connect with a lot of people from different worlds. It's like I met friends from Palestine, I have friends from Brazil and so on. So that if I want to have an international trip, I don't have to pay for my accommodation. That's the best part of my whole uh, year. So that's all. It was really an amazing year in the United States. I really miss Valencia College. I just finished my uh, graduation in April, so it's, it's very new for me, but yes, I really miss my friends and life in the United States. Uh, Mia, if you mm -hmm. allow, may I ask some question to Tanvir? Um, of course. Yes, thank you very much. So Tanvir, uh, as you've been there for almost a year, um, and you've talked about your experience at Valencia and some other opportunities as well, I was wondering if you would like to talk a little bit about how did you make it happen? Like your journey from a Bangladeshi university to a community college. I'm sure a lot of students would be willing to hear the process of like transfer, transferring this process. So, yes. Okay, so the thing is like I was a US State Department of, US Department of State alumni. So it was a, a scholarship program that funded by US Department of State. So the thing is, was like we got an applications via US Embassy website. Then we fill up the applications, write some essays regarding our goals and what we want to do. And they had those, they screening those applications and uh, call for an interview. We give the interview, then they send our applications for Global Challenge in Washington, DC. After that, US Department of State decided us to mm -hmm. go and spend a one year in community colleges. But I also get an opportunity to talk to my advisor uh, for further education in community colleges. So I show him my transcript and he told me the whole process that I can help people so that they, if they want to transfer. So the thing exactly. is like they have a- Exactly. I mean, that is one of the reason why I say that suppose yes. not everyone would be lucky to get this uh, CCI yes. opportunity, but suppose if someone wants to Transfer. I was talking to some other students in the last couple of days um, um, uh, ahead of this session that, so I'm studying the third year or sixth year at my university. So suppose I'm not getting the CCI thing, but is it possible for me to transfer my degree to a community college? So I'm sure uh, as your advisor uh, now trained and uh, you have the information, it's the best time for you to like spread this thing out, right? So first of all, the person who wanted to uh, transfer their credits, if you go to the Valencia website, you will see that there is a list of third party companies who evaluate your transfer. So primarily for me, my advisor or Valencia College, they evaluated myself. So if you wanted to, if you have interest to transfer your credit, contact to your international student service, they will ask you the transcript and they will evaluate the transcript and they will evaluate that if those courses are US standard or not. If those are US standard, if because this depend really depend on the different universities and how much they accredited from the international organizations, 
So if those are uh, accredited and they uh, they make sure that these, those are uh, United States standards, so they will be really very flexible and helpful to trans allow you to transfer your query from Bangladesh University to United States. And I think the most important uh, part of this throughout the process is like communications. Don't feel shy to communicate with anyone. Just send a mail. They are really very friendly. They will give you full support as this as far as they can. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, it was wonderful having you here, Tanvir. Uh, uh, glad uh, to have you back among us. And I'm sure as the days will be progressing, you will be able to talk more about the community college and its opportunity to our future students as well. All right? Thank you very much. And I would like to share my email ID and my Facebook page throughout the event uh, page sure. so that you can feel free to connect with me and ask me any questions. I will try to. Absolutely. Feel free, to, feel free to leave your email address at the chat box so that the other students who are interested, uh, they can get back to you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, now, the same question is to um, the admission officials uh, now that to your uh, community college, if a student from Bangladesh is aiming to transfer their degree, how do you uh, evaluate this thing? Uh, or what's the process, uh, if, if you can shed some light on that. Well, we do that with a lot of our international students um, because many of them will have had some studies in their home country. And the advantage of that is that they are able to take that coursework that they've previously obtained, have it evaluated and transfer one year um, or or less depending on the program of study. But it can really save students a lot of money to do that if they've already obtained some study in their home country. And it doesn't have to be that they've had to complete it. Um, so it is evaluated and uh, as Tanvir spoke about, there are several companies that can evaluate that kind of education abroad and will accept any of them. Uh, so it's an official evaluation that's done and then reviewed by our institutions and we bring in, uh, because our programs are two-year programs, we can only bring in 50% of the degree. So we can only bring in one year of transfer credit. But he may be able to, if he went on for a bachelor's degree, have further studies evaluated that more could be applied toward bachelor degree later on. But we okay. find that uh, in a lot of studies, students do abroad that they don't get a liberal arts component. And in the US, we really like those liberal arts courses. Uh, because we feel that it gives everybody a common basis of their education. It's a philosophy that we have in the United States that everybody should know a little bit about everything. And Jennifer mentioned this earlier. So even if your major is computer science, for example, you're still going to be taking history, uh, of course, mathematics, you're going to be taking psychology. You know, so there are courses that are what we call the common in, in New York State, we call them general education, common core uh, requirements. But um, so after yeah. the associate's degree the student could do the opt then and only be in the u.s one year so that's wow. a really great advantage of the flexibility that we have absolutely um could one of you uh, just write uh, some of the name of the third party evaluators if you remember right now so that our students can go to that link if it's okay i can remember um in california it's a little different we will um it's similar in the fact that we will evaluate credit. Um, you do have to go through a third party, typically, unless it's um, specific math courses. It, for one of our colleges, it's possible just to bring your transcripts um, to the dean. But typically speaking, you'll go through a third party. Um, one other thing I just want to mention, and I don't know if this is particular to California, so Arlene and Mia, please feel free to jump in. But um, it's also going to depend on your target transfer university. So we're very careful about awarding credit because what we don't want to happen to you is that we give you all these credits, like a full year of credit, and then you go to transfer to university and they say, wait a minute, what, what, what are these? You actually have to retake these now because we don't recognize mm -hmm. um, these units. So we are very careful and that's why communication is key. So for some um, private universities, some public universities, 
having that evaluation will be no problem. We will give you credit up to a full year, same thing as Arlene and Mia mentioned. But for some of the public um, or even some of the private more um, higher end, I guess you could say, or highly ranked universities like UC Berkeley, UCLA, for example, um, some of the Ivy League universities that our students do apply to, um, that can be a bit trickier. So we just want to make sure that um, you do the evaluation and you speak very clearly about what your goals are um, with our counselors and we'll guide you, you know, about what's possible, what's, you know, you want to be aware of. So I just wanted to mention that. All right. So um, that means that a stu you are suggesting the students to communicate with the, uh, the international admission counselor of that community college even before uh, they, you know, make the decision so that they know that okay, what, how many credits or what are the courses they may get uh, waived, and uh, in relation to that, what the universities in future they can get connected to, and yeah, what can uh, happen later on, right? I think Mia has something yeah. to say. Well, I, I just wanted to confirm uh, what you said, and one one of the places that students can look at as well is uh, Macy's. Um, that's one of the agencies. Um, if, for example, to take maybe taking a look at if you have college transfer credits through either Wes or Joseph Silmi, but as Jennifer mentioned, it's best to connect with the school first and see what um, evaluation they're going to accept and what would be the best for that uh, school. For example, uh, for us, for high school, we have our own international credit evaluator, so students can submit their high school credentials to us and we will be able to make that evaluation. But for college, you would have to go through uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the agencies, and then Valencia College will determine a course by course evaluation and match your classes. But similar to what both Arlene and Jennifer said, we can now transfer, you know, fifty percent of the degree. We want to make sure that you're still getting the exam, the core requirements for the AA degree. All right, thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, high school is completely different, and we can tell you pretty much right away. Um, so that's a really good point. Okay. Um, can anyone shed some light on the CUNY Hunter College MFA degree? Like one of the participants asked the question, can you give similar information about uh, CUNY Hunter College MFA degree? I'm okay, sure. I can. The CUNY system, the City University of New York, is the second public university system in the state of New York. So we have SUNY, the State University of New York, which primarily is the, um, the upstate, what we call upstate New York, and then the CUNY system, the City University of New York, is just in the five boroughs of New York City. Um, so while I'm not, I can't speak for CUNY Hunter, uh, everything is available on the cuny.edu website, so the student can go to cuny.edu connect to CUNY Hunter and find their admission requirements. We have many, many students who start at Fulton Montgomery and then transfer to the CUNY system. It's not as seamless as it is within the SUNY system, which is very, very easy and we have that guaranteed transfer. But because it's also a public university system in the state, there's no problem transferring credits. And so students can, if they meet the GPA requirements, pretty easily transfer on. But again, I would recommend that the student contact, go to the cuny.edu website and then contact CUNY Hunter specifically. Thank you so very much, um, uh, Spencer, for uh, conveying this message. Um, we've got a few more questions. Uh, one of um, the educators, uh, he's basically representing an institution who is helping the students. So he was asking question regarding the visa issues and some other things. So I'll just uh, say it. Uh, first question is, is, it is great to know that a student can uh, join fall session online. Uh, what about if a student fail to get the visa? Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's honestly a possibility. Unfortunately, we can't control you know, the, the certain situation and the visa officers, but I will say, and I don't know, Arlene and Mia, please jump in as well. Um, at Foothill and Danza, we have full associate degrees online. So if the student starts out in the fall um, and 
they're unable to secure a visa later on and just decide to continue their online studies, they can actually complete the entire associate's degree completely um, in, on, from their on, home country. Online. So like, of course we want, yes, online. We wanna welcome you to the US. We want you on your, our campus so you can take advantage of all the opportunities like Tanvir mentioned. Um, but if, if that does come into play, it's not a complete loss. You can actually get your associates and that online associates is transferable. There are still transferable courses. So then they can, you know, do the same process apply to the four-year institutions um, and try and get the visa with that um, letter or even continue online for their bachelors. Okay. Um, another question. Uh, thank you so very much uh, for answering. Um, how to make payment for the fall semester? It is a bit tough to send money out of country. Um, I believe that question uh, regarding the payments for the fall yep. semester. We use a, a company called flywire.com. I don't know if you all use mm -hmm. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the student can actually pay in their home country, in their home currency mm -hmm. by going to flywire.com, F-L-Y-W-I-R-E.com. And mm -hmm. you just scroll down and find our institutions and it's so simple they can do it from their home they can you know uh, again in their home currency they are guaranteed the best exchange rate oh good somebody's typed it in excellent so that's what they can do wow Very this is this is really good so yeah i'll just um yeah provide the information students also yeah. have an opportunity to enter tuition so they can finance um, their tuition um, through, through, for example, course we have a called tuition fund for our kids, and so they can finance their monthly within a couple of months. But also Flywire as well, it's, it's, it's an excellent resource to pay local currency. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question was, yeah, I believe uh, Jennifer already answered that. Uh, Raj Singh was asking cost comparison between community college, public university, and the private universities. Um, uh, yes. So Jennifer already answered, those are for one year study and they're just an average of giving an example. So yeah. The ne next question was, is it possible to receive company funding for scholarship? As due to lockdown, many companies are uh, is increasing, uh, Increasing regarding financial revenues. So just like you know, the postgraduate education, they get like fellowship or this sort of opportunity. I think the student is wondering to know if they can receive any sort of funding or scholarship from any um, external uh, company or institution. Well, certainly if the student has their own connections mm -hmm. to those outside scholarship sources, um, but we don't have those, those private connections. Mm -hmm. But if they, if they know people, we, we often have students that are funded from maybe their, their uncle's business or um, a corporation that they fit a criteria for. There are, there are many sources of private scholarships that are out there that students can apply for. I'm, it might be a, be a question better answered by yourself. <laughs> you yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, that's, I, yeah, that's what I say that it's it's probably applicable for the master's degree program or the PhD where they have like organizational funding, but probably for community college and then this um, thing, um, I mean, uh, you, you need to check with uh, what authority you are connected to. Um, the last question um, till now we have is, um, I have my spouse with me. Uh, do I have to face any type of difficulties for admission or visa? If I'm, uh, if uh, I mean, if the student is aiming to go to community college. Well, I'll just um, say Jennifer, for admission. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> and then I'll let Jennifer continue. <laughs> go ahead, Arlene. I was just, there was a pause, so go ahead. <laughs> Well, certainly for admission, no. Um, you do have to show a little bit of additional funding if you're bringing a, either a spouse or a dependent child, um, just because they have living costs. And so you need to prove uh, that you have the funding for not only yourself and for your education, but for your spouse and your children. 
Um, you know, the visa, that, that's a tough question. We're not visa officers, but certainly one of the successful strategies is often people will leave their spouse or children in their home country, come for a little while, maybe a semester or even a year and study, and then they've proven that they are committed to their education in the United States, and then the, the institution can uh, issue what's called an I-20 F2 for the spouse or the child, and then they can apply for the visa. But I, coming I that's directly it. with your family members might be difficult to get the visa in these days. Exactly. I mean, as long as you can show the purpose of coming together, I mean, that might uh, fit in, but unless that, I mean, first you should get your own visa and do complete the one year study and then show the proper reason why do you want them to be there and then apply for the visa. Thank you so very much. Um, yeah, the next question is obviously it was like kind of it was about to come. Is there any way to get full aid as international students? So I believe this 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 question you you get throughout all of your almost all of your sessions uh, for international students. Right? I think you're one of the state sponsored scholarships, <laughs> like the CCI grant. Okay, uh, so apart from the <laughs> apart from the uh, CCI, um, there is very limited scope of getting um, aid for the international students. Uh, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, especially at the community college level, um, there's certainly scholarships um, that we mentioned, and there's many community colleges offer both um, first year scholarships for new students as well as continuing student scholarships and scholarships when you transfer. And there, that's where you are more likely to see the full scholarship, although that's also pretty rare. I would say in general in the United States, um, full funded scholarships are extremely rare and very competitive and um, they're based on many different factors, but um, I'm not, unless other than, you know, those specific programs that you've mentioned, I'm not aware of any community colleges that offer complete full um, funding at this time. It'd be nice if that becomes a reality in the future, but um, right now, it's very difficult. Okay, I think that we want to add something. Yes, I would like to answer the question that some of our, uh, some of our peers that um, asked about the private funding. The thing is, like for example, my funding was totally different to the college funding. It was a government funding, which uh, funded by U.S. Department of State. Another thing is that I also got some people, met some people who came in Valencia College and studied by different private companies, like for example, uh, Toshiba and different NGOs and everything. So the thing is like they shared us that they have to make a contact with them. They have to show that the interest that I wanted to go outside and make contacts with the people who already adopted this type of scholarship and also make some personal contact. Sometimes they also funded out of their rules, you know, just add some private scholarship for you, maybe which may uh, cover 80% or 50% of your expenditures. I think that's another thing. We have to uh, take care, we have to make donations in different, different private organizations to adopt those private scholarships. Thank you so very much. Um, uh, then we're, this is really helpful. So the student may think uh, or try to connect with some of the companies if they feel that uh, they can get the funding from that company, but definitely they need to check with the college or university where they are applying for. Um, uh, we'll take the last question to Erlene. Um, I've completed 57 credit from Bangladesh uh, on computer science. Will I be able to transfer credits to four year community college? I don't think there is a four-year community college. I mean, it's definitely two-year. I'm asking this is because I haven't heard of four-year colleges. Right. I mean, some community colleges, like Jennifer, may they do have some bachelor degree programs at their institution, mm -hmm. but community college is usually about 60 to 62 credits. Mm -hmm. So he's really reached the now, assuming that all of those credits are going to be transferable. Mm -hmm. And that's where we, we ask that they be evaluated because perhaps they're in studies that he wants to study something new in the US. Um, so not every credit may come in as transfer credit. But assuming that they do, he's really reached the two year level. So um, 
we could we could give them guidance on what four year programs they could apply for. But let's first do the evaluation and see where they are. Okay. Jennifer? Uh, last another question, Professor Islam. Uh, do the community colleges allow and help in uh, jobs or consultancy or completing courses concurrently? So I believe that's been answered already. A lot of community colleges uh, they do have fantastic international service, student service. So you can definitely get in touch with them and then. Uh, see what sorts of opportunities you are seeking and whether you meet their criteria and accordingly they can help you to get that opportunity, right? Yes. yes. Uh, just to ask uh, all the presenters here today, uh, we've got a few requests about recording the session and then uh, sharing it later on to probably our social media channels. Uh, are you okay with that? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Thank you so very much, everyone. Um, it was a fantastic session. I believe so many informations and that's why some of the participants were saying that we will um, be requiring the recording of the session. We will try to provide that from the EMK Center's Facebook page. Um, so yes, uh, looking forward to having you again if the opportunity arise and uh, yes, Thank you very much all the participants uh, for joining us today. I'm sure you had a huge amount of information, a uh, lot of misconceptions about uh, community college. Uh, our presenters tried uh, to uh, like, you know, eradicate and uh, yeah. So anything, um, any last lines from each of you before we wrap up the session? Let's see, thank you all for uh, hosting us. And Thanks to thanks to everyone and thank you also to Nvidia for participating as well. Yeah, yes, thank you thank so you much. Gwen. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate thank it. You. And Tempira, that was really great. Thank you for sharing your perspective. Yeah, thank you so very much, everyone. Tanbir, um, Jennifer, Arlen, and Mia for um, allowing time at the early in the morning today. So yes, <laughs> uh, looking forward to getting in touch with you again. Uh, till then, take care, stay safe, and uh, yeah, let's keep connected. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.